everybody it's Teresa welcome to my channel I'm gonna do a multi wrap macrame bracelet today I did this bracelet on video the other day and I mentioned when I was doing it that I had made multi wrap ones before and I had a couple people ask if I would do a multi wrap one on video and of course I don't mind at all I always like to do whatever y'all ask me to do if I can <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be using three different color beads today this is Miyuki Silver Lined Ruby, Ado. These are Ados. This is a 60 in Opaque Turquoise AB. It's also Miyuki. And this is an Ado in Metallic Dark Bronze, and it's also Miyuki. And then I have these three different colors of thread that I'm going to use. This is kind of a cream color, and this is sort of a turquoise, and this is a red. I'll try to put links to where I got all this stuff in the description box below in case y'all want to get some of the same things. Uh, I've got a button here, and I can't remember where I got this, but I'll see if I can find it. <laughs> but it's just a pretty little shank button. It's a bronze color shank button. And I've got my macrame board here, of course. The only thing I'm going to be using for tools are my scissors to cut my leather and my cord with. And I'll probably use a little bit of GS Hypo Cement. Um, I think that's everything. Let me get some of this out of the way and I'll be back. Okay, I, I left out the most important thing, I guess, which is my leather that I'm using. <laughs> I'm using this Exotica leather. It's one and a half millimeter and it's dark brown. This bracelet that I made the other day, uh, it came out shorter than I meant for it to. I was going for like a seven and a half inch bracelet. And I allowed an, uh, two inches for my button and my loop. So I only made about five and a half inches of the macrame. And this is one millimeter. I, made, I used one millimeter leather when I made this. And I'm used to using one and a half or two millimeter. This didn't take up as much. It only took about, the button and loop only took about an inch and a half rather than two inches. So that's probably why it came out shorter than I meant for it to. Uh, another reason other than the leather being thinner, uh, I don't know why. I always make a loop here at the button. I always make a loop, or I mean a knot, with my leather before I start the macrame. I don't know why I didn't hear. And then down here I always make a knot and make my loop and another knot and I didn't do that here either so that would have taken up a little bit of room and also when you're using one of these little buttons with holes in them rather than a shank button since I didn't do that knot see it's the leather is doing that and I don't like that so I'm probably gonna have to cut this part and do it over <laughs> but the leather I'm using today is is bigger leather it's one and a half millimeter and I'm gonna do those knots even though I'm using a shank button today but I'm still gonna do those knots so the button and the loop that I make today will take up about two inches. Uh, I'm going to try to make like a seven inch bracelet to go around the wrist three times. So it would be seven inches around the wrist three times. So to figure out how long to cut my leather, of course I take seven times three, which would be 21. I always add about a half of an inch because when you, when you make, when you wear a wrap bracelet, when you wrap it around your wrist, you know at some point you're going to cross you're going to have to cross when you clasp it at least and that takes up just a little bit of room plus the beads take up a little bit of room so i always add about a half an inch to the measurement so seven times three is 21 plus a half an inch is 21 and a half and then i double that because it's going to go down the center of my macrame board doubled like that like i did on this one the other day and i'll put a link in the uh in the corner of this video and in the description box below to this to this bracelet in case you want to go back and see it but it i'm going to put it down the center of my bracelet twice so i'm going to have to double that 21 and a half inches which is which will be 43 and then i always add about 10 inches um to allow to make the knots and the little loop here at the end and everything <clears throat> so i've cut about a <coughs> excuse me about a 53 inch piece of my leather is what I have here maybe 54 because sometimes I cut an extra inch because I'm kind of paranoid and afraid I'm gonna run out <laughs> so that's what I've got here uh, as far as the cord that I'm gonna wrap with I'm gonna start with this 
cream color cord here and uh, I cut off way too much if you watch this video the other day you saw that I cut off way too much cord wrapping cord too and like I said I hadn't done one of these in a while and I forgot I only need enough wrapping cord for the for the macrame part of course but I was thinking a seven and a half inch bracelet and I always do like a foot of cord per inch so I cut off about seven and a half feet of cord but I really only needed what this part the macrame part which is about five and a half inches so I really only needed about five and a half feet of cord so I ended up with about two feet more cord than I needed so I'm going to try to do better today so uh since my uh and I want to take into account the loop and the button and then I want my my sections in between the loop and the button to be roughly the same length each so if I take 21 and a half inches and I subtract two inches for the button in the loop, that leaves 19 and a half inches. And then if I'm going to do three sections and I divide 19 and a half by three, that makes six and a half inches. So I'll be doing about six and a half inches of macrame for each section. So I've cut about six and a half feet of my cream cord, which is what I'm going to start with. And I did the same thing I did in that bracelet the other day as far as the ends of the cord that I'm using. Uh, I, I put it on a little baggie and put it in a, put some glue down and ran the glue through the, through the, I ran the cord through the ends of the cord through the glue to stiffen up the ends. Uh, this cord is, it's waxed. It says it's waxed, but it's waxed on the inside. But it's nice and stiff, so it probably didn't really need much treatment at the end of the cord. But if you're using a cord that's not waxed at all, like Eslon or something, you can use any cord you want. You can use any beads. You can use anything down the center. You don't have to use leather. But uh, if it's not a waxed cord and it, it might be hard to get through your beads, you might want to do that. To, you can use fingernail polish to stiffen the ends or any kind of glue. This time I actually used my Loctite glue because it dries faster and it's the only reason it dries harder so I used that still. The other day I did the Geosipo cement but you can use whatever you want to. Just I just do that to stiffen the ends. It makes it a little bit easier to go through through the beads. Uh, the only thing as far as using whatever beads, whatever cord you want, you just want to make sure that your beads, whatever beads you use will fit on the cord. That the cord will go through them. So I'm going to try to get my macrame board set up here and I'll get started. Okay, before I get my macrame board out, <laughs> I'm going to, because it takes up the whole entire frame and it's hard to see anything else when I get it uh, set up, I'm going to take my leather and just put it through my button there like that. And then I'm going to find both ends of my leather. Like that. And, and bring my button down to the center of my leather. And then I'm just going to tie an overhand knot here. And I forgot to say I've got my beading all here because I always use it to guide my knot down. So uh, I'm just going to put my beading all in there and guide my knot down. Keep my button from slipping through there, which it almost did. Well, that didn't work. Try this again. Maybe I don't need to use the beading all. Maybe it's going to get in my way. Yeah, I think I can do it better without the beading all. I'm just going to guide my knot down here until it's close to my button. But I want it, I don't want it to be real tied up against my button because I want it, the button to be able to move. Let's stick my all in there now and tighten it down a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Now I'm going to just pull on each piece of the leather to tighten the knot. And so there I've got a knot, but it's I, I'm still able to, my button will still move well enough there. And just tighten it up. Okay, so now I'm going to set up my macrame board. <laughs> okay, I've got my, I forgot to mention, I've got a, a 
T-pin here that I'm going to pin my project to my macrame board with. And I've got my button up here at the top of where the measurements are. And I want, I want to try to get it to where when I start the macrame, it starts at the top of the measurements so that I can keep an eye on my measurements and make sure I get six and a half inches between each section. I mean, of course, it's not going to be exact, but we'll try to get it as close as we can. And I'm going to take my T-pin and put it through there. I, I hate to put it through the leather because I don't want to pierce the leather. I'm going to try to put it through the shank of the button and pin it to my board. If I can get it through the shank of my button. There it goes. Here it is. And then just pin it to the board like that. And that's not exactly right at the top of the measurements, but that, that'll, that's close enough. <laughs> now I'm going to make sure to keep my leather side by side and put it down here in this notch. And you want it good and taut so that you can do your wrapping. Okay, now I'm going to set my board up here and try to get it all in frame. See if I'm going to move my camera here. Tilt my camera up and hope I can still, y'all can still see what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm going to take my cream colored cord here that I've cut off and I'm going to find the both ends of it. Put both ends of it together like that. And then I'm going to find the center. And there's the center. And I'm going to start just making some square knots. And I hit the camera again. <laughs> I'm afraid this is going to be Hold on, let me move the camera again. Okay, I've got the camera moved up a little bit further. Hopefully this will work. Now I'm going to take the center. I'm going to put it under my leather. And I'm going to bring one half, I mean, yeah, one half of my cord through. And try to make sure to keep my center. Because I want to have the same amount of cord on either side of my leather. I'm going to make my first square knot. So I'm going to take this side and I'm going to make uh, loop my leather over here where it looks like a P. I'm going to try to hold it so that I don't lose my center. I'm going to take this cord put it over top of this cord and under the leather through the loop of the P. Pull it all the way through. Keep a hold on it so that the don't lose my center. And tighten. And now I'm going to push, push it all, all the way up against my knot that I made there. And now I'm going to make a Q. Go over this, over this cord under the leather through the loop of the queue, pull the cord all the way through, and tighten. Now, since I want to make six and a half inches of macrame, I'm going to do just a few square knots before and a few square knots after my beads. So I'm going to make about, about a quarter of an inch of macrame knots before I start my beads. That'll probably be about three. So I'm going to make another P. Go over this cord under the leather through the loop of the P. Pull the cord all the way through. And tighten. Make a Q. This cord over this cord under the leather through the loop of the Q. Pull the cord all the way through and tighten. And I'm going to make one more. So I'm going to do a P over this cord, under the leather, through the loop of the P, and tighten. Make a Q over this cord, under the leather, 
through the loop of the Q and tighten. Okay, now I'm going to get my beads and, and I'll be back. Okay, now I'm putting my beads on here. I'm taking the end of my cord and it's probably, you're gonna, probably going to have to angle cut your cord a little bit to help get your beads on there. And I'm starting with my bronze beads. I'm just going to put these on there. I'm just going to put several on here. Probably going to put about 10, though it's going to take many more than that, I think. And as you go, as you're putting these on here, the end of your cord might get a little bit frayed and you might have to angle cut it again. That's another reason to maybe cut a little extra. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm just gonna make a really loose knot here that I can easily get out just to keep my beads from falling off the end of my cord as I'm working. Now I'm going to push up a bead on each side. Now I'm just going to do a square knot just like I've been doing. I'm going to make my P go over this cord under the leather through the loop of the P, pull the cord all the way through with the beads and everything that's on there because I'd already done one side. So I, I put beads on each side of my cord. Tighten, make the Q, go over the cord, under the leather, through the loop of the Q, pull it all the way through along with the beads because I've got beads on both, cord, both cords and tighten. And you can make as many knots, many or as few knots between your beads as you want to if you want to make you know, if you don't have many beads and you want to make, or you want more of your cord to show than the beads, just however, however you want to do it. I think I'll put maybe two between each set of beads. So I'm going to do my P, go over the cord under the leather, pull everything through, tighten, make my Q, Go over this cord, under the leather, through the loop of the Q, pull everything through, and tighten. Now I'm going to push up another bead on each side. Now I'm going to make my P. Go over this cord, under the leather, through the loop of the P, bring everything through, tighten, make my Q, over this cord, under the leather, through the loop of the Q, bring everything through, and I hit the camera again, <laughs> tighten, now I'm going to make one more, make my P, over this cord, under the leather, through the loop of the P, Bring everything through, tighten, make my Q over the cord, under the leather, through the loop of the Q, tighten. Now I'm going to bring up another bead on each side. I'm going to make a P over the cord, under the leather, through the loop of the P, bring everything through, tighten, make a Q 
over the cord, under the leather, through the loop of the queue, tighten. I'm going to do one more, make a P over the cord, under the leather, through the loop of the P, tighten. Make a Q over the cord, under the leather, through the loop of the Q, and tighten. And again, if you happen to get up and leave your work and you forget, you come back and you forget which side you need to make next, this little bump right here tells you which side. The next, the next knot I need to make, I need to do a P because that's where the little bump is. So I'm going to do that until I get down to where I have, what I say I needed, six and a half inches. So I'm going to, and that's about a fourth of an inch. So I'm going to get down to about six and a quarter inches and then I'll be back and I'll make three more square knots and we'll change to another color thread and some different beads. Okay, I'm down here to where I'm almost to my six and a half inches. I've made one knot under my lice beads and I'm going to make two more so that it'll match the top. This is what I've got so far. So I'm going to make two more knots here. And I didn't, I, I did a better job of measuring this time. I didn't wind up with a whole lot, <laughs> a lot too much cord like I did before. So I'm going to make my P. I'm going to go over my, over this cord under the leather through the loop of the P and tighten. Make my Q, go over this cord, under the leather, through the loop of the Q and tighten. Now I'm just gonna do that one more time. As far as the measurements for these, if you're making this for yourself, uh, it's a good idea to just take it off the board every now and then and measure it around your wrist and see how it's looking like if your first wrap is as you know around your wrist like you want it to be and then at the end before you make the loop for the button and cut off your leather you know make sure it wraps around you wraps around the way you're wanting it to okay now I'm going to move my work up up the board so I have more room to work and I'm going to show you how I'm going to change to a different color and some different beads okay I moved my project up my board here a little bit. I'm going to move it up some more, but I wanted to leave it down here just a little bit, hoping you could see better what I'm doing than if it was hanging off the top of the board. I'm going to take the cord that I have left here, and I'm going to bring it on the inside of my leather, just like that, and I'm going to take a, try to bring it together here, and I'm going to take a couple of pins here, a couple of my T-pins, and I'm going to try to pin it here just so it'll stay for a minute just pierce the cord there so that it'll stay there now I'm going to bring my leather back down here I had taken it out I'm going to bring it back in here and put it back in the notch like I had it I just want my cord that's left my cream cord that's left and one of them doesn't seem to be holding like I want it to. I just want it to stay still for a minute while I'm adding this new thread. Okay. Now I've got a got my turquoise thread and I'm gonna find this I put I've cut off about six this I'm gonna do ladder stitch next and I don't think ladder stitch takes as much cord as the square stitch does but just in case I went ahead and cut off about six feet and I'm going to put my ends together like I did before and find the middle and I'm going to put it under all this and hold it try to keep my center and bring one side through so I want the same amount of cord on each side of the leather, as close as I can get it. And now I'm going to make a square knot over all this. I'm trying not to get it hung up in my T-pins here. <laughs> so I'm going to make my P. Bring this cord over this cord. 
under all everything the old cord and the leather through the loop of the P bring it all the way through try to keep my center and tighten and bring this new knot the beginnings of this new knot right up against the old knot tight as I can there now I'm going to make my cue Go under everything, pull it through the loop of the queue. Okay. Okay, now that I've got that started, I'm gonna make probably about I'm gonna make three so that I, I'll be consistent. So I'm gonna make three. Do my P. Go under all everything. Pull it up. Make my cue over this cord, under everything, my old cord and the leather. I'll make another P. Under everything, through the loop of the P. Tighten, make my cue over this cord, under all these, through the loop of the queue, and tighten. Now, I'm going to take this off, I'll go around to the back, I'm going to cut my old thread off here real close. And I'm going to, I can't remember if I said at the beginning I had my GS Hypo cement, but I do. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of GS Hypo cement on here. I don't know that it needs it because that new thread over top of it probably would hold it. And those knots probably, those, those ends of that thread probably wouldn't work out. But just in case, I'm going to put a little bit on there. Now I'll get my GS Hypo cement closed and get this back on my board and I'll be back. Okay, I've had to lay my board down pretty much flat to do this next part. It's just too hard for y'all to see what I'm doing with it standing up the way I had it. I'm going to take my right side of my cord and I'm going to go under my leather and just bring it through the inside of my leather. And I'm going to take the left cord do the same thing. Bring it under here. Bring it on the inside of my leather. And now I'm going to cross my cords. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring this side under this side of the leather. This side under this side of the leather. And I'm just going to push it up there as close as I can get it to my knots that I've already made. Now whatever bead you use for this is going to have to be able to, this thread is going to have, a cord is going to have to be able to pass through it twice because I'm going to take my right cord and I'm going to go through the bead this way and then I'm going to take my left cord and go through the bead this way. And I've had to get one of these uh, collapsible eye needles out I didn't think I was going to need one, but I am. It's just too hard to try to get it through there without one. If you're using beads with bigger holes or thinner thread, you won't have to fool with this needle. I'm going to put my needle on my left cord here. I've got my bead, my right cord going through my bead. I'm going to take my left cord and put it through my bead. 
cross it through there. Pull it through and pull on both cords. And pull my bead up like that. Now, if like I started this first bead, I put my right cord through it first. And that's what you want to do every time. Whichever side you do, you want to do the same side first every time. So first I'm going to put my cords back through here like I did first time. Just back on the inside of the leather. I'm going to take my right cord and take another bead, put my right cord through there. I'm going to take my left cord and put my needle on it. And I'm going to have to do this every time because it's going to alternate. The sides are going to alternate, so I can't leave my needle on there and just keep doing it, which would be handy, but I can't do that. So I'm going to have to. Just take my needle off and put it back on every time. When you bring your needle through there, it kind of squishes the eye of your needle a little bit. And sometimes you have to open the eye back up and your thread gets frayed. Okay, now, so I've got my bead with my right thread going through it. Now I'm going to put my left thread through it. Pull on the ends of both threads. Well, I think I have pierced my, I, I stuck my needle through my cord. <laughs> want to avoid that if at all possible. Okay. Now I'm going to pull both cords. Pull it up there and pull your bead up there tight. Now I'm going to put my cord under. Take my needle off before I lose it because I'm going to have to switch it anyway. Put this cord under my leather, bring it up on the inside. Take this cord under the leather, bring it up on the inside. my right cord, put my bead on it, take my left cord, put my needle on it, pass it through my bead, Pull both cords through. Pull it up there tight against the bead, that bead. I'll take my needle off. I'll only do this one more time, then I'll leave you alone. <laughs> take my needle off. I'll put my thread, my right thread under the right leather on the inside. My left cord under the left side of the leather, bring it on the inside. Take my right cord, put my bead on it. Take my left cord, put my needle on it.
needles uh, my needles getting squished and my threads getting frayed you can take your beading all and kind of open up your the eye of your needle a little bit but you want to be careful because these are just very thin little wire needles and they'll they're easy to break the eye okay there we go now I'm gonna take my bead that I've got my right th thread going through already and I'm gonna put my left thread through it the other way or my left cord and I'm just going to pull on both threads. And pull that up there like that. So now I'm going to reposition my project till I've got it up here at the top of my measurements so that I get know when I get down to where I want to get to. And then I'll be back and we'll do three square knots before we start the next color okay i'm down to almost my six and a half inches i think one more bead and three of my square knots will get me there uh, this is what i've got so far for this section so i'm going to do this last one on camera because i didn't i don't know how well y'all could see what i was doing when i was filling with that needle so i'm going to take this cord i'm going to my right cord, I'm going to put it under my right lever, leather, bring it in on the inside. Take my left cord, do the same thing. I got the needle on my left cord so y'all wouldn't have to wait for me to put it on there. I got to get it through there too. Okay, now take my bead, put it on my right cord, take my left cord, and put it through there, going the opposite way, crossing it inside that bead there. Pull it through, just pull on both cords. Pull it up there. Okay, now I'm going to take my right cord like I've been doing. I'm going to put it under my leather, bring it through to the inside. Take my left cord, bring it under my leather, pull it, come, pull it through to the inside. Now I'm going to make three square knots. I'm going to take, make my P, go over this cord, under this cord, through the loop of the P, tighten, make my Q, over this cord, under the leather, through the loop of the Q, Make my P over this cord under the leather through the loop of the P. Tighten. Make my Q over this cord under the loop of the under the leather through the loop of the Q. Tighten. Make my P over this cord under the leather through the loop of the P. Tighten. Make my Q over this cord under the leather through the loop of the Q and tighten. And I had a lot of thread I left or a lot of cord left over. I didn't think it would take as much for the ladder stitch as it does the square stitch. So I've got plenty. So I'm going to reposition my board and we'll add in the next color. Okay. Now, since I've got plenty of this turquoise cord left, I'm going to just, I've un hooked everything from the bottom of my board. I'm going to take it behind my leather and I'm going to put it in this notch here. And then I'm going to take my leather and put it in there. I'm going to put it in the 
I'm going to put in the sides on either side of that where that is so that I can keep my turquoise in the middle. So now I'm going to, I've got, I'm going to do square knots with my red beads too, only just a little bit different. So I've got about six and a half feet of my red cord here. And I'm going to put the ends together and find the center. I'm going to do just like I did before. I'm going to go under all this, my old cord, my turquoise cord, and my leather and everything. Hold it so I can keep my center. Pull one side through. Make a square knot over all of this. So I'm going to do a P. Go over this cord, under all the cords, the, the leather and the turquoise cords, up through the loop of the P, tighten, and bring that knot up as close to the turquoise, the last turquoise one you did as you can. And now I'm going to make my Q over the this cord under all the cords through the loop of the Q tighten see if I can zoom in a little my camera's messing up when I zoom and zoom in and zoom out maybe if I do it slower it won't do it so bad now I'm gonna do I think I'm zoomed out zoomed in too much And I'm going to make my P go over this cord under all the cords and the leather through the loop of the P, tighten, make my Q go over this cord under all the cords through the loop of the Q, tighten, make my P over this cord, under all the cords, through the loop of the P, and tighten, make my Q, over this cord, under all the cords, through the loop of the Q, and tighten. Okay, now I'm going to reposition my board again. Okay, now I went to the back of my bracelet and I cut off my turquoise cord. And I put a little GS Hypo cement on it like I did the other, the cream cord earlier. And I've loaded a bunch of beads onto my right cord of my red beads, just on my right cord, not on my left cord. I'm going to take one of my beads and I'm going to push it up here. And I'm going to make my P first half of my square knot. Make my P under my leather. Pull through the loop of the P. Now my beads are on my left cord. So I'm going to take a bead, push it up, make my Q. And that just causes those little beads to be offset a little bit. They're not right across them for each other like they were when we did the bronze ones. So now I'm going to do a knot between them just without any beads. I'm going to make my P. Now I'm going to make my Q. Now I'm going to, my beads are back on my right cord now. I'm going to take one and push it up. Make my P, which is the first half of my square knot. And 
Now my beads are on my left cord. I'm going to take a bead and push it up. Make the rest of my square knot, which is my cue. Now I'm going to make a square knot without any beads. Now my beads are on my right side. I'm going to push a bead up. <clears throat> Make my P. Beads are on my left side now. <clears throat> Push a bead up. Make my Q. <clears throat> And now I'm going to make a square knot without any beads. You can make as many square knots in between the beads as you want to. Just whatever you want to do. So now I'm just going to keep doing that till I get down to almost my six and a half inches. And I'll end with three square knots like I did, like I started here. But I'll be back before I do the last three square knots. Okay, I'm down to where I need to make my last three square knots now. I need to tighten my letter here a little bit. Um, and I flipped it over to the back. I'm going to make my last three square knots over this uh, collapsible eye needle here. I've done this in other projects. You, you all have seen if you've watched them. I'm going to stick my needle just just up it under that last stitch and the eyes down here and I'm gonna make these last three square knots over the needle and the leather and since I flipped it over I'm gonna have to start with my cue which is fine you can do that the whole time if you want to if that's more comfortable for you I'm just used to doing the piece first so I'm gonna do the cue I'm not going to tighten real tight because I've got to get that needle back through. So now I'm going to do the P. That's one. Now I'm going to do another Q. And the P. That's two. Now I'm going to do another Q. I don't think I got that one around the needle right. <laughs> I better take that back out and do that again. I think it got between the needle instead of behind the needle. Okay, I'm going to make my Q. Under everything. Now I'm going to make my P. Okay. Now I'm going to take one of my cords, doesn't matter which one, either one, and I'm going to put the cord through the eye of my needle. It's kind of hard when it's not right up here in my face like it usually is. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just going to pull the needle through very gently because these needles, the eye will split really easy. Now 
as soon as the thread starts coming through, I'll pull on the thread instead of the needle. And that just brings my thread back up through there to secure it. Now I'm going to take my needle off and do the same thing with my other cord. Put it through my needle. You have to open your needle up a little. They kind of get squished together. There we go. Now I'm just going to push this back up through a few stitches. I think I'm going to take it off the board to do this one. Hold on. I've got it off the board now. I think I, maybe I can do it better if I got it in, here in my hands. I'll put, put my needle back through a few stitches here. And then just gently pull it through. There we go. And now I'm just going to cut off real close because I'm gonna put a little GS hypo cement on here take my GS hypo cement and put a little bit on where those threads were I don't think they're coming out but I hate to go to all this trouble and then my cords come loose that would be bad <laughs> Okay, now let me get the lid back on this and I'll come back and we'll make the loop for a button. Okay, so here's what we've got so far. Now we're going to make the loop for a button. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to tie an overhand knot. I'm going to bring it down close to my work. Pull on each piece of the leather to tighten the knot. And now I'm going to bring my button down here and see how big my loop needs to be. We need to make it right about here. Tie another overhand knot. Bring it down. Before I tighten it, I'm going to check and make sure my button will go through. I think that'll be okay. Try it again before I completely commit <laughs> yeah I think that's gonna be okay now just pull on each piece of leather tighten up the knot and if it gets a little if it turns out to be a little bit snug the leather will uh, give a little bit over time it'll loosen a little bit and now because I've got a little bit extra leather and because I think these six O's will fit on this leather I'm gonna see yeah they will I'm gonna put one of them on each end of my little leather here just decorate up my ends a little bit I'm going to make another overhand knot. And 
not over top of my bead, <laughs> which is what, where it's trying to go, just to stop my bead from falling off. Pull that tight, and then I'll usually make this at a different spot, a little bit different spot. Tie it. And tight. I got a little little decorative in there. Of course, you don't have to do that. You can cut them off short if you want to. Now I'm just going to cut off my ends here. And I'll put a little bit of GS Hypo cement on these knots right here to make sure they don't come loose. I don't think they will, but take my tweezers and pull them pretty, pull them good and tight. So now we got, I didn't have much wasted leather. So we got our beads here, right across from each other. And then here we got our beads in the middle. And then here we got our beads kind of offset, kind of staggered diagonal there from each other, I guess. So let me get all this cleaned up and I'll be back. There we go. There's my multi-wrap macrame bracelet. Uh, I tried to set up on this little tray here so y'all could see all of it. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you have any other suggestions of things you want me to try to do, I, I will. If, I, if it's something I can do, I don't mind at all to do it. I can't do everything. <laughs> But I'll try to do anything that I can that you all want me to do and want to, want to see. As always, thank you all so much for joining me. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry. And I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested. Along with the link to my Facebook and Instagram and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Take care.